Welcome to Tech Notice. Two CPUs over here, both i7s. One of them 12700 and one of them 12700K. Now on paper, they look pretty much identical to each other, except the K in the end. But the thing is, is it worth the price difference? Intel says it's about $20. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less, depending on the actual seller. But according to my findings, I found something very interesting when benchmarking these two CPUs. So, uh, Let's talk. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. First of all, I want to say a little thanks to CCL Computers here in the UK who provided the 12 700k now they're not the sponsor of the channel but still provided me with this part so thanks very much for sending the 12700k out so i can share the findings with my audience if you are in the uk i highly recommend checking out ccl computers with their stock of pc parts pre-builds or just let them build the pc for you if you're not confident in building it yourself check them out in the description below i'll leave the link for them as well thanks very much guys so before we run the benchmarks very important to note the testing setup because if you have a different testing setup than somebody else on the internet Internet, they might get different findings. So my CPU obviously is 12700 or 12700K, but everything else stays the same in the testing setup. The motherboard is Asus Z690 Pro Watt with BIOS version 1003. The RAM we're running is four sticks of 16 gigabytes of Kingston Fury DDR5, and it's running at 4800 megahertz. The cooler is Fantex Clay Share 1 360 millimeter AIO. GPU is Asus TUF RTX 1390. The OS drive is Team Group Cardia C440 and the benchmark SSD where all the benchmarks and you know files are on is the Seagate Firecuda 530. The case is Fantex P600S and the side panel is open just so that we're not restricted by the case or the airflow so it's basically like an open test bench. So then let's have a look at the specs side to side if you're not familiar what's 12700K and 12700. Both of them have 12 cores and 20 threads so there's 8 performance cores and 4 efficiency cores. Now, the max turbo frequency on the 12700K is 100 megahertz higher. 5 gigahertz, 12700 is 4.9 gigahertz. The max turbo frequency of the efficiency core on the 12700K is 200 megahertz higher, 3.8 gigahertz, and the 12700 3.6 gigahertz. The base frequency difference is quite a bit different now. The 12700K runs at 3.6 gigahertz on base frequency, whereas the 12700 is 2.1 gigahertz base frequency. That's the performance cause. The efficiency cause base frequency on the 12700K is 2.7 gigahertz and 1.6 gigahertz on the 12700. As you can see, the base frequency is quite different. The cache is the same, 25 megabytes, and the base power or TDP is massively different now between those two chips. 12700K is 125 watt TDP and the 12700 is 65 watt TDP. The turbo power on the 12700 is 180 watts, yet the turbo power on the 12700K is 190 watts. They both have the same iGPU and the 12700K really, according to Intel, is about $20 more expensive. But sometimes it isn't that much and the 12700 is more expensive. So I highly recommend you check out the latest pricing in the description below if you want to know what's the latest pricing and which one is more expensive because it really matters what the price is for each of them because then you can really decide which one is worth buying. Now the benchmarks. And I want to start with the power draw because this is the most interesting finding to me what I saw with these CPUs. Usually what happens with the non-K and the K version is that the non-K version is more power efficient. So basically you get more performance per watt out of it because of the lower TDP and it tries to cool it down and it's just lower and so on. And that's why you actually get a cooler with the 12700 if you buy the non-K version because of the lower TDP, you get, you know, included cooler basically with this, where the K version doesn't come with a cooler. As you can see, you can't put a cooler in here. It's just a tiny little skinny box 
But when I'm running my Cinebench R23 run, you know, multi-core test, then I can see that the 12700 draws about 20 watts more from the socket than the 12700K. And the minimum power draw is actually lower also on the 12700K at about 11 watts rather than 22 watts on the 12700, which is very interesting for me because in a moment you'll see in the benchmark scores, the 12700K most of the time scores higher in almost every single scenario, but the 12700 uses more power, which is interesting. So this is something I didn't expect between these two CPUs, and I'm not quite sure why is this happening. Bear in mind, there could be a little bit of silicon lottery, and the 12700, for example, has a very like high leakage on the voltage of the, of the CPU, so all the cores leak a lot of voltage, and that's why we have to push more voltage through and so on. But this is still quite a bit different than the 12700K. There's 20 watt difference, which is, you know, interesting if you remember on the specs the 12700k should have been you know pulling more power than the 12700 so then cinebench r23 the single core is pretty much identical the 12700k is about 1.8 percent faster than the 12700 and the multi-core now this is interesting here is about 4.3 percent faster on the 12700k and as you can see on the previous findings the 12700k also used less power when making these results which is just interesting to me like it almost feels like the results are flipped around and you know like they put the wrong ihs and printed the wrong actual you know number on the cpus because usually it should be the other way around that the one who uses less power gets you know lower scores basically when looking at the geekbench 5 scores we can see that the 12700k is two percent faster on the single core scores roughly about four percent faster on the multi-core which is really in line with the cinebench scores as we saw earlier when testing the igpu scores on the geekbench 5 vulcan and opencl score then they really perform the same because it's really the same iGPU they run the same you know frequencies we're using the same RAM everything so they're really within the margin of error but when doing the test the 12700k interestingly is about 1.3% 1.27% slower than the 12700 but really I wouldn't consider this as one slower than the other because they're really really the same. So then, looking at Blender benchmarks over here, the 12700K in the monster scene, that's Blender 3.1 by the way, the, the latest one, is 11.4% faster, which is quite a bit faster. Now, interestingly, on the junk shop scene, the 12700K is much lower than the 12700 and about 11.5% slower. On the classroom scene here, the 12700K is about 5% faster. Now some real world application benchmarks like Photoshop. In here, interestingly, the 12700 is actually faster than 12700K and the 12700K is roughly about 2.7% slower, which is really, you know, just above the margin of error. And bear in mind the way I'm doing the test, I'm running the test about three times. If the pattern doesn't, you know, appear at three tests, then we're running four and five. With these CPUs, we're roughly averaging about five or more tests each to really get like an accurate, you know, reading of what the benchmark result is. So on Photoshop, it does look like the 12700 is faster. On Lightroom Classic, another photo editing application over here, we can see that the overall score is really the same and there isn't that big of a difference between neither of them. But here we can see a little bit that the passive score is better on the 12700K. Hey, and the, the passive score is basically like multi-core utilization and running it longer time, like exporting lots of photos and so on. That's where, you know, a lot of the cores of the CPU are used. And that really makes sense because the 12700K, you know, long-term TDP is a bit lower. So 12700K really shines here, but it's still within 1% of each other so it could be a margin of error but that's what i would really expect to happen but moving on to premiere pro and video editing now the difference is quite a bit different the 12700k is about 8.7 percent faster in overall score that's the extended overall score or about six percent better in the standard overall score interestingly the extended export score is one of the highest here you can see 10.5 percent faster and the gpu score on the 12700k is much better as well about 14.5 percent faster which is quite a bit more 
and even the effects or everything really is much better on the 12700K. The thing that really pulls it down is just the live playback score, which is where we're using different codecs to measure the live playback score. But even here, the standard live playback score is a little bit faster, but the extended score is just you know 2.4 percent slower but i would expect them both to perform the same but overall the 12700k is you know between 8 to 10 percent faster which is quite a bit faster here in after effects the story isn't as good but still quite a bit faster on the 12700k side about 5.4 percent faster in overall score the ram preview also was about seven percent faster on the 12700k but the other ones were a little bit, you know, lower side. In DaVinci Resolve here, the interesting thing is the 12700 wasn't able to complete the benchmark with XMP at 4800, so I had to drop the XMP on both of the chips and then measured it that way. But, you know, bear in mind the 12700K did actually complete it with uh, 4800 megahertz XMP enabled, so you get like an extra few percent, you know, boost there as well when it's a little bit higher. But the 12700K is 1.8% faster in overall score, extended overall, and about 1.6 in standard overall score. So really no difference here when we're looking at DaVinci Resolve performance. I do think that if you're doing long exports and renders that are very, very long, like you exporting, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes, some, some, some kind of projects, then the 12700K is a little bit better just because of the, you know, long-term TDP is not like limited by 65 watts and you know, it has to drop down its uh, wattage there. Moving on to V-Ray and CPU rendering in a different way, we can see that the 12700K is 4.3% faster. Now, in conclusion, both of these chips really perform very, very similar. According to my testing, the 12700 and 12700K aren't so different in photo editing applications. Really, they perform very much the same. So if photo editing is your, you know, kind of thing, then, you, there's no point really going with the K version of the chip. But when moving on to video editing, especially in Premiere Pro and After Effects, the Winch Resolve not so different, then we can see the 12700K can be 8 to 10% sometimes or even more faster depending what you do, which is very interesting finding. And also at the same time, when you're doing like long renders, like the V-Ray here as well, you can see that the 12700K is a better option. Interestingly, my 12700K actually runs more efficient than the 12700 or pulls less power. So that's interesting as well. But if the price difference is more than $20, I don't think the 12700K is really worth it over the 12700. And if you're a gamer or, you know, not a creator, then you might be saying, hey, but the 12700K is overclockable and you can overclock it. And yeah, yeah, as you can see, even my power limits, if I match the power, you know, of both of these two chips, then the 12700K would actually be even faster. But the point over here is, I don't think creators, that means like professional people who edit and work on their PC, you know, 24 seven, well, not 24 seven, you know, eight hours a day or even more, they need reliability more than overclocking. And when doing overclocking, the one thing that you really, really are going to lose is the stability and reliability and you're going to spend loads of time trying to find the you know optimum setting but if your computer is the workhorse then you don't have time to do that i've got another complete video about whether creators should be overclocking their cpu or not go feel free to check that out but in terms of the performance difference in stock settings just letting the bios optimize and you know like do the ai overclocking or just push as much power or performance through these chips as possible then seeing that this 12700k in general isn't that much better than the 12700 yet if you are a video editor i would still recommend the 12700k over the 12700 because it just looks like it is faster and for 20 dollars to get 10 percent extra performance i think it's worth it especially at that price point let me know what you would choose and if it's worth the price also would be very interesting to know that wherever you're located let me know in the comment section below what's the price difference between those two chips because sometimes i've seen the 12700 more expensive than the 12700k like here in the uk in some of the shops which is just mind-boggling to me just let me know what the price difference is in your country in the comments below thanks guys for watching likes if you enjoyed it subs if you like to see more and if you want to pick any of those up or check the latest pricing in your country the links are in the description below thanks for watching bye bye